We're going to be talking about how to get rich today on Coffee with Dr. Scott. So let's talk about how to get rich, shall we? Getting rich is all about your habits. If someone asked you to define a habit, I don't know what your answer would be. But for me, you know, I'd say something like it's just you know, a recurring thing in your life uh, that, repeat, that you repeat over and over again. But as you start to study habits and start to look at them a little deeper, habits are very profound and very neurologically set into our brain. And unfortunately, our financial habits um, lead to whether or not we get rich or not. And from what I see traveling across the country, and even in my own life in the past, uh, those habits are what prevent you from getting rich. Those habits where you have a trigger, and if you've read Influenced Art of Persuasion, he talks about it being a tape that plays in your brain. So once there's a trigger, he calls it click whir. So the, the tape player gets played and, and we get that whirring sound and we just kind of go through our, our automatic behaviors, which is what a habit is. And whether it's your, your physical fitness or your business or your relationships, uh, or as we're talking about it here, how to get rich, your finances, those habits completely affect what you're going to get out of your life. Uh, obviously in the fitness world, uh, if your habit is the you know, eat terrible food and, and never work out, uh, we need to change those habits. But those habits are neurologically set in there and they're very tough, to, tough to change. In order to change them, <clears throat> there are several steps to do it, but you've got to realize that, that every habit begins first and foremost with a trigger. Uh, and financially, again, a lot of those triggers um, come up from us having a need or, or, or seeing a certain thing and therefore going out and buying that thing. And that gives us a reward. So there's always a trigger and there's always a reward. And with that reward, it starts more triggers. Our reward, and one of the reasons a lot of people don't get rich, uh, is because obviously, in order to get rich, you need to make more money than you spend. There's your big secret right there. Uh, but too many people, again, that I see across the country as I work with, with doctors, aren't getting rich because they spend a lot more than they make, <clears throat> because they have these habits around money because these habits are ingrained in the way they spend money and the way they get their rewards. And what I'm gonna tell you is that those habits need to change. Uh, if you change your habits, is how they apply to money. We're designed, again, to have those triggers. And when we have those triggers, we respond naturally. And obviously the advertisers know how to uh, get those triggers activated for us. And typically those triggers means that we end up buying something, unnecessary stuff, uh, things that we think will make us happy, but all it does is spur on the next trigger. Um, and again, if you go back to Tuesday's show where I talked about minimize stuff, maximize happiness, they don't ever get you that happiness. They just, it's trigger, small reward, which requires another trigger. Uh, it's like being addicted to food uh, or coffee as the case might be, which is a habit as well, in and of itself. And I want to use that as an example. Uh, but one of the things I've been working a lot in my life, especially as it comes to money, is changing some of those triggers, changing some of those habits. For instance, uh, if you feel like you need something in your life and you, uh, it's, it's more than a block away, what do you do, right? You go grab your keys, you hop in the car, you drive over there, you get it, you drive back. Uh, it might be on the other side of town, but that trigger reward, you went and you got it, you got the reward, you came back. Think about how inefficient that is. Uh, first of all, you might not have needed the thing anyway. Second of all, what it took for you to get that thing, depending on what it might have been, uh, was probably um, a lot more effort than it was required. What I'm going to tell you is when you start looking at those triggers, I, a year and a half ago, got rid of my car. Um, and I'm not telling you to get rid of your car yet. But I did it as an experiment and I ended up loving it. So now if I decide I want something that's on the other end of town, I don't have a way to get there. Uh, my wife's usually out doing real estate around here. I work right here at the house. Um, I don't need a car. Now, I have saved money, but it wasn't about the money. Uh, you know, the amount of money I spend on an Uber to get to the airport twice a month uh, and, you know, a rental car when I need to drive somewhere nearby is way less than what I would have spent on a car. So I did save some money, but it wasn't about the money. It was about the rest of the stuff. It was about somewhat necessary or purposeful hardship. It was about me saying, all right, let's make better decisions. Uh, so now I go to the grocery store once a week instead of having that easy access. Uh, and it's been better for my habits, been better for my spending. Uh, again, my wife still has a car. I have access to one. 
uh, but it just helps me to make better decisions. And in my opinion, it's helped the family to spend less. We're no less happy. In fact, I definitely say I'm more happy right now. My kids and I want to go out to breakfast. We typically go out to back breakfast on Friday. And that's definitely one thing as far as how to get rich would be to go out less. And we have done that in our family here a lot less lately. We're very much you know, uh, a home cooking family. But Fridays, my, my kids and I typically go out to breakfast. Uh, anyway, so let's get into habits. And, and, and again, this is kind of a setup for Finance Fridays. Something that we're going to be talking about a lot every Friday. Uh, but today I just wanted to give a, an overview of spend less than you make, start making better decisions about your money, and I want to give you some tips on how to change habits. Now these habits are not necessarily just about how to get rich uh, or, or how to save money or how to do any of that kind of stuff. They are lifetime habits. Uh, they're a way to change habits in your life, whatever your habit might be. So number one is to find the trigger. Find the trigger for the habit that you want to change. Um, so for me, let's talk about coffee. Um, if I wanted to quit coffee, I don't, otherwise I wouldn't have a show, right? It would just be with Dr. Scott. Uh, I don't think water with Dr. Scott would, uh, would do the trick. Now, in order to change the habit, you then have to take that same trigger and then cue yourself or trick yourself to do something different. Uh, so with coffee, the reward, which again, I talked about trigger than reward, and that's what we're after. With coffee, the reward is a warm, refreshing beverage. Uh, so if I wanted to change that, um, I would have to have something else available to give me a similar reward to change that trigger. Now that trigger, that habit is still going to be ingrained in, in the back until we do it repeatedly. But if let's say if I wanted to change the tea, I'd be very simple to put a teapot on the counter as opposed to uh, the coffee maker. Uh, if I want to change the warm honey lemon, just having all that stuff out available would be the first thing I saw when I have that trigger that that's the first thing I do, that's how you would change that. Now, again, the same thing goes with your fitness, with your, um, with your business, anything, any habit that you want to change, find your trigger. Second step is to have that same cue lead to something else. Uh, obviously, I don't smoke, so I don't know that, but they always talk about that too, is have something else in your hands to get over that habit. Number three is to uh, try to make a new reward similar to the old one. So that's your third step there. Uh, so again, I don't think for coffee, it's, it's so much about the caffeine for me. Uh, I don't feel like I get a whole bunch of caffeine effect for that. I just enjoy the beverage. So I'd have to find a different warm beverage if I wanted to give up coffee. Again, I don't. Um, and then number four, I think, is, is probably the key thing. The fourth step for changing a habit is something that they call keystone habits. It's kind of getting your foot in the door for something something new. Um, and it basically means create one thing that's simple that always leads to that change of habit. So a keystone habit is finding one trigger that you have every day and making it apply to the new habit. So that keystone habit could be waking up, meaning you know that the first thing you do when you wake up is the new habit. So if it is fitness based, if you get up out of bed and you do one push up, at least your mind is ingrained in the thing that we're going to work out today. If, if it is about getting rid of coffee, if it's drinking two cups of water first thing you wake up to allow for um, that new habit to take place, find a keystone, find something you do every day and follow it up immediately. So that becomes your trigger. That keystone habit becomes the new trigger to your new habit. And, and if you do that on a daily basis, you've accomplished the hardest part. Uh, you've overcome the biggest obstacle of starting that thing. So again, if it is a working out thing, fitness based. Uh, I know a lot of people that, that get into fitness routines brand new. They try to work out after work and they do it some days, they don't do it other days. Uh, and I would tell you that if you start a keystone habit, if every day immediately after you wake up, you do something for fitness, it at least prompts your brain to realize that that's a big part of your life and you get a daily experience on it uh, and it becomes a new reality. And then after work, you're more likely to go back and do the real workout, if you will, doing it first thing in the morning, getting it over with. Um, that goes back to just morning routines. I feel like whatever's most important to your life should be done first thing. Um, as soon as you wake up, you should do that, that one thing you're trying to change in your life and focus on that one thing. That's a whole different topic. So create a, uh, a keystone habit. The fifth thing that you need to do in order to change a habit is re reinforce that habit with your own beliefs and with community. Now with community, that means no different than AA. That's why AA is so successful is because of the community of people around you. Uh, so obviously, if you're getting into fitness, you want to surround yourself with, with, with fitness enthusiasts. 
Uh, you want to be a part of that community. You want to be able to be open and, and um, share with them. Uh, if I were to want to quit coffee, I'd have to surround myself with non-coffee drinkers, which means my wife and I have decided to do it together. Although it would be very tough. I'm not saying it's impossible. You just have to have a different trigger. But it's a lot easier to sustain that habit uh, if your your community uh, is the same. So, uh, you know, I would have to... <laughs> Go down to a tea shop. Do those exist? Uh, I mean, coffee shops are everywhere, but do they have tea shops? I guess they have tea and coffee shops. Um, but this understanding of your habits can help you become rich. And the reason I call it how to become rich, again, because we're doing a finance Friday, we're going to be having a lot of finance fri- lot of finance topics coming up on Friday. I needed to address the, the issue of your habits first and foremost. Uh, should you choose to go off on a different path, and try to find a way for yourself to get rich. If it hasn't happened to you before, two things you can do. Produce more income, spend less. Uh, I recommend you do both. So obviously in my, my business consulting, I'm always telling people how to make more by providing more service. Uh, but I would also tell you to start looking at your habits. Uh, and I'm not the type of person that says to forego things that you really want in your life. Uh, if you want something, I feel like you should get the good thing of it. I feel like you should get the luxury version of that item. All I'm saying is that uh, a lot of your wants are habits and can be changed. And maybe you don't really need or want that thing. Uh, but if you do decide to go get it, like I said, I, I say to have the best of the few things that you have. That one was just my opinion. 